So a good friend of ours uh, from Waterford uh, Diocese, Waterford Lismore Diocese, being ordained a deacon today as on Good Shepherd Sunday. It's a, a wonderful day to be ordained deacon or indeed to be ordained priest, as he will one day with the help of God. Uh, it's uh, an interesting theme for, for us. It depends on, depending on where you're from. If you're from a city, you mightn't have much of an idea what it's like to be a sheep farmer. Uh, I'm from Midlands, Midlands, uh, in Tipperary, it's all, it's all good grassland, so we're more cow people than, than sheep people. Um, but I'm sure they're similar, just smaller and fuzzier kind of an idea. We've got, we've got an expert sheep, sheep farmer here, so he'll tell me all about it later. And actually, our, our secretary used to be responsible for checking the sheep dip around the country, so to make sure that the, dip, the, 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 the sheep are fully submerged under the product, whatever it is, flea powder juice thing that they're in. Great, okay. So we have lots of sheep experts around here. I'm not one of them. But um, I remember, I've told you a story before, but I think it is. it does kind of relay the same idea uh, to uh, sheep farming. Two friends of mine from Naples <clears throat> came to visit me in Thurlis, and uh, there were some cows out the back of our house, and they were up around the fields, and these, these Italians have, obviously, they've never seen cows up close because they live in a an area of the population density equivalent to that of Hong Kong, so it's just all concrete. Uh, so they were like, oh my goodness, sheep, yeah, these are cows, cows, big cows, look, cows, cows, cows. I said, yeah, they're, they're, they're cows, we have cows. It's kind of normal for us, we have more cows than people here in this country. Uh, and I said, and I said, do you want to see them up close? He said, so do we, we go in field? I said, no, no, I, I'll call them. No. I said, no, I'll, I'll, I'll call them. If I call them, they'll come. They said, no, you, you, you speak cow, you speak cow, you speak Italian and cow. And I said, no, no, just, just Italian. Cow is easy. It's just one word, really. Uh, you just say, suk, 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 and they come. They said, no, no, I try, I try. So then Michele looks out into the field and with a load of Italian confidence goes, e suk, e suk, e suk, e suk, e suk, e suk. And the cows didn't budge. They just like kind of heads up and didn't take a step, right? And then I called them, and on they came, say, miracle, hey, Louis, how are you? How are you do this? This is, this is crazy. I said, no, it's just I speak a little cow. But one word, that's all you need. But it's, it is interesting how, how animals, when you spend a lot of time with them, they do get to know you, and they do get to trust you, you know? So when, when the shepherd is with his sheep, uh, the sheep do come to recognize his voice. We've got some beautiful mountains behind us here, um, up in the uh, up in Mahan Point and down on there in, in the Commerce. There were there are sheep all over the place, and you'd wonder how on earth does a shepherd even find them? Because there are no there are no fences, there's no railing in any way, shape, or form. They're just everywhere and nowhere. Uh, so how on earth do you do, do you gather them? Like, and then it happened on one occasion we were out there uh, that the, the the shepherds arrived. And it's, you know, it's loud, it's windy, it's, there's a, a waterfall there. And yet when the shepherd called, boingy, 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 out they popped like from behind all the rocks and nooks and crannies. And he was able to gather them. It's, this is, this, there you go, there's nature for you. Why? Because they know, they know that if they do what the shepherd says, it's good for them. He'll bring meal or lead them to fresh grass or bring them water. They don't always like what the shepherd does. Sometimes they have to get sheared. I presume that's kind of, you feel kind of exposed afterwards. But I think for the most part, uh, what the shepherd does for them is, is good, is good. So they trust him. This is how Jesus speaks about himself. I am the good shepherd. Elsewhere, not in today's gospel, but elsewhere he says, I know my own and my own know me. The sheep listen to my voice. So similarly, the sheep will listen to the voice of the shepherd because what he asks them to do is good for them. We as, as the faithful should listen to the voice of Jesus because what he asks us to do is good for us. It mightn't always be what we want, and in today's world it may not always be politically correct, but what Jesus asks of us is always, always good for us. So Jesus speaks about himself as a shepherd. Now again, I've mentioned this a couple of times, where when we think of shepherds, for those of us who might not be familiar with, with the whole farming background, those of us from an urban area, we probably think of shepherds as uh, little eight-year-olds with tea towels on their heads, you know, uh, on up, up on a stage for a Christmas pageant or something. So they're kind of cute and harmless, right? Uh, 
That wasn't what a shepherd was back in the day. They had to defend their flock, defend their flock from predators, defend their flock from thieves. So you stood between danger and your flock and risked your life to protect them. That's what you did as a shepherd. You risked your life to protect your flock. You love your flock and you're willing to actually give your life for them. So when we think of priesthood, priesthood and, and this whole idea of, of being a shepherd are intimately bound because we're called to shepherd the flock entrusted to us. So just thinking about priesthood today, when we think of a priest, then what, what is the Lord trying to teach us with this, with this idea of, of the good shepherd? I think firstly, a priest must be a man of prayer. A priest must be a man of prayer. Without prayer, we have no relationship with the shepherd. So how can we possibly imitate him? Prayer isn't like a, a bonus in our spiritual life, or it's not like a, an, a, a useful add-on, right? Prayer doesn't kind of help our relationship with God. Prayer is our relationship with God. If we do not pray, we have no relationship with God. He's a concept. We believe he exists. He's out there somewhere doing his thing. But without prayer, I have no relationship with him. So if a priest doesn't pray, he cannot be a good priest. Cannot. Impossible. He can be a good speaker, a good organizer, a good fundraiser. He cannot be a good priest. So in order to be a good priest, we must be men of prayer. And that means daily daily prayer, and not just time allotted for prayer, but prayer with the heart. Prayer must lead us into a union, a communion with God. And so as I pray, I get to know this shepherd that I'm supposed to be imitating, this shepherd whose, whose instruction I'm supposed to follow, the shepherd whose work I'm supposed to continue. How can I do any of that if I don't know who he is? So I must pray. There's, there's no negotiation there. There is no compromise. We must pray or we cannot be good priests. A priest must be a man of prayer. Something which I, I think is a little underestimated as well is that these days especially, a priest must be a man of courage. So it's one of the, the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, courage, you know, because in order to, to lead people, and that's, again, this isn't us patting ourselves on the back or us thinking ourselves important. This is a responsibility given to us by Christ himself, shepherd. Like a, a, to, to be a shepherd, lead the flock. So this is a divine command. So in, in order to do so, we may at times have to say things that aren't popular. Welcome to the priesthood. That's part of your job. But this is, the part of, this is part of, of any role of leadership. If you're a school principal, if you're a, a judge, if you're, a, if, you, if, you, if you're head of any department in Tesco's, at times you're going to have to say things to your employees that may not be popular. That's leadership. That's part of it. Now, you, you, there are ways of doing it. You can, doing it. you can do it tactfully. You can do it with compassion. You don't have to, be, uh, you know, you have to fix every problem with a sledgehammer. But you do have to stand for the truth and courageously, courageously witness to Christ, whether it's popular or not. Our, our, our vocation is not to be popular. Our vocation is to be faithful. And so we, can, we, we must be men of courage. Men of, and that will that, stem from being men of prayer. And, and finally, I think something that, that, an idea which helps me and it really summarizes what, what I'm supposed to do as a priest is I'm supposed to be a father. I'm supposed to be a man of prayer, a man of courage, and a father. I have to be a father. So whoever the Lord entrusts to my care here in Holy Family, the young people or who've, who have come and even those who have left, families, uh, when you're doing a parish mission, you speak to the people as if they're your children. And I don't, that, I don't say that in any way to kind of belittle people. Um, that's not what it's about at all. We don't never speak down to people. But I'm, I, I have to know the shepherd and, and share that knowledge of him with others. But as, as a father, not, not as a, a, a lecturer, uh, not as a, a, a politician just to say the things that are nice or whatever. I must do so as a father. And if, if I have that fatherly understanding of my vocation of priesthood, so many of the other things just fall into place. 
I mean, as a father, you don't allow your family to serve you. You serve your family. Your family doesn't exist to serve you because you're a father. You serve them. So through your work and through your responsibility, through your self-renunciation, you lead your family. You provide for your family. And when you come home from work and you're wrecked tired and your little son wants to play a bit of football and he just absolutely adores you and, and loves spending time with you, you're tired, but you will renounce watching the news or match of the day or whatever it was because your little son wants to spend time with you. That's being a father. That's being a father. And so as a priest, when, when we're tired but people need us, or when uh, we're not necessarily liked or popular for standing for the Lord, that can happen too. All of these things, we, we behave as, as fathers, motivated by love, motivated by our knowledge of the shepherd, the good shepherd. The Lord in the gospel today, he starts with a, a line that's a little uncomfortable for priests. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd is one who lays down his life for his sheep. That's the key to it all. Self-sacrifice. If, as priests, we're willing to sacrifice ourselves, then we're willing to sacrifice our time, then we're willing to pray. We're willing to, be, willing to sacrifice our, our popularity, we're willing to be courageous. If we're willing to renounce our own will, then we're willing to, to follow the Lord and to imitate his, his priesthood. We're willing to be fathers, if we're willing to renounce ourselves. And so to be a priest today, you have to be a real man. If you don't want to renounce yourself, don't be a priest. If you don't want to renounce your own will, don't be a priest. If you want to be popular, don't be a priest. If you want a nice cushy job, don't be a priest. If you want to just say what people like, go, to, go into advertising. That'll be your area. Not priesthood. But if you want to really make a difference for all eternity, if you want to guide souls to heaven, if you want to take on, on your shoulders this, this, this yoke, this heavy responsibility, knowing that what we're doing is the work of the Lord and that he will never leave us lacking. He will always support us, build us up, strengthen us, refresh us when we need it. Then maybe consider priesthood. Priesthood, fundamentally, it's a call. It's, it's God's initiative. He does the calling, we do the answering. And it's a, a wonderful vocation, albeit today quite misunderstood. But we ask the Lord today, who says that the harvest is rich, and my goodness, is it rich today. There are so many people who do not know the Lord. There are so many people who, who are saddened, beaten down, depressed, grieving, lost, <clears throat> because they have, they have never been shown where the light is, what the light even looks like. The harvest is incredibly rich, and the laborers are, are few and fewer. So what do we do? Give up and go home? Feel sorry for ourselves? Nope. Ask the Lord of the harvest to send laborers to his harvest. We pray. We pray for the renewal of the priesthood. We don't necessarily need lots of priests. We need holy priests. And so we pray that the Lord will provide and that the hearts of young men will be stirred up to this vocation of fatherhood, this vocation of prayer, this vocation of courage, of self-renunciation, this vocation of imitation of Christ, and that they may courageously and selflessly answer that vocation and be formed into men after Jesus' own heart. So we pray for the renewal of the priesthood and through that the renewal of the church. We pray in a special way today for John McEnany, who's being ordained a deacon. We pray for him and his future now, his uh, at least six months to a year. I'm not sure if he has a date yet for his ordination to the priesthood. We pray for this period now of service as a deacon, that it will prepare him for the great day of his ordination to priesthood and that he may have many years of active service, drawing souls to the Lord for their eternal salvation. 
Amen.